Guys, have you ever laid awake at night and thought about all the things in the universe and how it all works together? Well, maybe not that. But you know what? Today, I want to answer a few questions, a few mysteries of the world, like why is the sky blue, the grass green, or what the hell is a signal-to-noise ratio in ham radio, and why the hell do I get up at 5 in the morning to do these videos. All this and more, this time on K6 UDA Radio. Let's do this. All right, guys, we're here to explore the mysteries of the world today. And today, uh, it's something a little bit ham radio geekish. I guess <laughs> today I want to talk about signal to noise ratio. What is it? How does it work in your favor, out of your favor? And why having a good receiver is important to overcoming that signal to noise ratio on some of the bands. But before we begin, may I remind you, still giving away this little meter this little guy here, um, about $185 worth for your IC705. Guys, if you have the IC705 and you want a free meter, um, follow me over on Rumble, on rumble.com forward slash K6UDA. When I hit 1,000 subscribers over there, uh, I'm giving this thing away. We've already done... The uh, 40000 that I promised over here. So uh, as long as a bunch of you trolls don't decide to leave and uh, knock me back down into 39000s, we should be good over here. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button, the bell notification. Uh, share the video. Very important. Leave a comment here and a thumbs up on this video and all my videos. It would really help me. And uh, it's free to you. Anyway, back to the show. So guys, signal to noise ratios in ham radio. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't claim to be a scientist. I don't claim to know all the technical jargon and that's why I do this video like this. This video is for people like you and me who aren't these super tech wizzo guys uh, with engineering degrees. We're the normal guys. We're the, we're the normies of the crowd. <laughs> I'm going to put my trusty headphones on. Uh, we are on 80 meters. It is literally, well, now it's 730 in the morning. We're about hitting gray line here. We're uh, we're just at about gray line. The uh, the light is coming. It's changing from nighttime to daytime. This is called the noise floor. As you can see there's no signals. Uh, there's there's nobody talking. We're not picking up something in the background. This is your noise floor. And right now, uh, the noise floor is climbing. It is, uh, it's an S8, solid S8, bouncing into S9 territory. Horrible, horrible conditions. Uh, this is where we would expect to see a lot of signals. Okay. We'll crank that up a little bit. So now you could see... There's a fairly strong signal here, uh, peaking a little over S9, but you can barely, barely hear this. Why is that? Because when you tune off that noise floor, that, that atmospheric noise. So actually, what is that atmospheric noise that's... Uh, it's given us S9. Well, actually, uh, the scientific term for that atmospheric noise are uh, pixie dust. Yes, 
Uh, it is true. Pixie dust is real. It exists. And on 80 meters, the pixie dust is strong. Um, Tinkerbell is above us, sprinkling all this shit down <laughs> all over the place. And it creates this heavy uh, noise floor. We'll switch off to another band here. All right. So now you can hear these signals. We again have what an S7, S8 noise level going on here, but you can actually hear uh, in the front, in front of that noise or above that noise level, uh, you can hear these 10 and 20 over signals. Now, we're going to flop over here to 10 meters. And 10 meters for me, 10 and 20 meters here uh, at the ranch are, are normally a very low noise floor um, event. I just turned off the preamp. Now my signal to noise level, or my, uh, my signal, just dropped down to an S0. I can still hear him. Can hit the uh, CS button. I'll bring my noise floor. I'll bring my grass back in. Now listen to how clear his voice is. This is with the signal processing, the uh, digital signal processing. Now I just turned it off. You see, when he's talking, that signal, uh, the signal, the S meter, is jumping up to about an S4, S5. And with all the preamps turned off, um, we have S0. We're, we're back to that S0 noise level. So, let's now go back to 80 meters. Everything... From S0, those distant stations, everything from S0 to S8, there's absolutely no way we could pick those things out. So you can barely, barely hear something down there. Let's engage that DSP. Now, with that filtering in place, we're actually picking up, uh, we're actually reading this guy's signal, and he's right there in that noise level. You could see the grass isn't getting any taller where he's talking. Not at all. We take that filtering out. We can just... Barely hear him, but now the uh, that background noise is uh, is pretty bad. It makes it tough to hear him. We can play with some filtering here. We'll take a little bit of those low ends out. And we'll suck the width down of our signal. And, uh, oh my God, that's probably not the technical term. So, um, now we engage that DSP again. I'm able to copy 
uh, this guy's signal, and he is well within the noise. He's right there at that noise level. But now if his signal was any lower than this, there'd be no way. We wouldn't hear it. We wouldn't even be able to find it. Let's jump over to 40 meters. This guy's close to 20 over. So we can hear him. He's uh, three or six dB over the noise level. So there's probably a signal in there, but that S4 noise level right now is keeping me from uh, from hearing what's behind door number two. Now, if I turn my preamp off, preamps. So preamp brings everything up. It amplifies the front end, that uh, the front door of your radio. Preamp two amplifies it further. So if you're having a hard time hearing any signals whatsoever, uh, you can engage those preamps, and they'll they'll help you. They're going to bring all the noise up. See, now we've got, uh, with the second preamp engaged, I've got an S7 noise level. So it's going to take a little bit to find a signal that's, uh, that's that much above it. When I turn that off, the grass under my feet has, uh, has gone down too. It's been mowed. So let's bring the grass up just a little bit. See, we're not playing with the noise. We're just kind of, we're letting that filter do some of the work for us. And this is purely visual. This has absolutely nothing to do with the signal. All right, 5-7 in northern Idaho. All right, so this guy's working a small pileup. So this is a POTA activation. Um, so he's in Iowa. We're in Idaho. Don't confuse the two. Uh, you could hear those voices, muffled voices behind him. You can hear him pretty good. All right, so we're not really being, I'm not able to pick out those guys way down in his, uh, in his noise level. Let's see if the uh, preamp will help us. November 6, Lima, Echo, Echo. Uh, November 6, Lima, Echo, Echo. Uh, you're 59 in the Kilo 1093. Now these guys are both. This guy is freaking strong. All right, guys. Uh, this is in no way the only way you can... Uh, drag in weak signals this is not the uh not the end all be all for uh signal to noise ratio there's guys that uh that know this stuff much much better than me this is one non-technical ham to another um my experience kind of dragging this stuff in I like to hear those weak signals. I like to try to make contacts with those weak signals because that's kind of the gold in ham radio. The low-hanging fruit are the guys with uh, stacked tri-banders who are 20 over to yours 
And when you come back at them from your uh, 100 watts and a wire, they can hear you. Because their antennas are so big and so powerful, they've got tons of gain. Uh, That's what I call the low-hanging fruit. Where the gold is, kind of like gold mining, you have to dig for it. You've got to be able to, uh, to jump in and dig around a little bit and find those, uh, those gold nuggets. They're hidden. They're hidden below the noise or in the noise. And you just saw some of that. So anyway, hey guys, if you like this video, uh, again, leave a thumbs up. Let me know. Uh, Let me know your techniques because my techniques for doing this, for digging out the gold, aren't the only techniques out there. I know that there's a ton of other ways to do it. And I know you want to share it with me so I could share it with the rest of the world. Anyway, that's all I got today. I'm Bob, K6UDA, 7-3. I'm out of here.